don't ask me about macros. You can ask me macros. I have a book. I wrote a book that's got a whole section on how to, to figure out what your macros are. That's the easy stuff. I can give you a set of numbers all day long. Sustaining your lifestyle and doing something that's actually going to help you improve your quality of life. It's more habit change than anything else. Most of the time, the things that you are worried about getting in the way are actually the reason why you should be doing something, you know? It's like, oh, I don't have any time. Well, then you need to improve your time management. You need to focus on this and reprioritize what's important. Because if you don't think you have time now, wait until you are sick, wait until you are hurt, wait until you get to do something. Then you can be like, oh, well, I should have taken time. So it's going to be one or the other. You're going to spend the time. You're going to spend the money. You're spend the effort. You got to prioritize how long do you want to maintain and how well do you want to perform for that period of time. I work with a lot of women and mm -hmm. one of the, the biggest struggles that I see in my clients is the wanting to give and take care of everyone else instead of themselves. And I think, I think for guys, it's a little bit, it's wanting to perform at the cost of themselves, right? It's job comes first, performance comes first, career comes first, these types of things, putting yes. energy into something other than yourself, but just different reasons. Looking at what you're telling people, what you're doing for yourself, being like, well, you know, I get why it's hard for people because this sucks. And then you find a better way. You try something else. You're like, hey, wait a second. This is seeming different from me. Let me try it with my client. And they're like, oh, this is awesome. I love it. And they're like, okay, let's try it with another client. And I hear people that have been doing this for 20, 30 years, big, big names. And they get that uh, clout enough where they can say, or that personality, that fame, uh, where they get, you know, mm -hmm. they go on YouTube or they go on social media and they're like, like, science doesn't mean anything. Do what works. And people listen to them when they say that. But when I talk to people and I'm like, you know what? I understand everything that you're, that you've been taught, but this is what works. They kind of look at me like, what What are you talking about? You're crazy. You know, it's like, I've been doing this for a while, guys. You know, I, I figured out what works and what doesn't work. And let's try this and just see what happens. And it usually works out for them. Right now, because of the space being in mostly in the keto carnivore space right now, I focus on fitness and I'm trying to be a voice in the world. I feel like I'm a voice in the wilderness sometimes when we talk about the importance of exercise, fitness, moving your body, metabolic health, when it comes to quality of life, it's not always just about weight loss and it's not just nutrition. You need more than nutrition. Uh, I did a video recently on my YouTube channel on this channel is like, you know, don't ask me about macros. I, 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 you can ask me macros. I have a book. I wrote a book that's got a whole section on how to, to figure out what your macros are. That's the easy stuff we can do. We can, I can give you a set of numbers all day long sustaining your lifestyle and doing something that's actually going to help you improve your quality of life for the rest of your life. That's where you need a coach because there's a lot more to it than macros. It's more habit change than anything else. You know, all the, the, the fitness, even the, the sleep, sleep is easy. You're sleeping. I, I love to sleep, but developing a habit where I make the time to do the sleep, mm -hmm. developing a habit where I make the time to, where I make the time to prep my food, food where I make, you know, it's the habit that allows all these other things to happen. So there's a lot more habit development and behavior change in coaching than I think a lot of people realize. They think I'm getting a coach to give me a workout. I'm getting a coach to push me. I'm getting a coach for accountability. It's like, it's really none of that. Our job for most of what we do is to help you develop good habits. So the mentality for people joining all these challenges and 75 hard and doing all these things, right? It's so, they're so reliant on this external source of energy because they don't have their own desire to do it. And that's, and that's really what uh, people need to understand is, you know, motivation by definition means whether you want to do something or not. That's what it means. I, I, motivation is the desire to do something. So you can't get that from somewhere else. If you're getting the energy from some, uh, artificial accountability or something that you're some, someone else is setting an expectation on you that you don't want to set for yourself. That's what it is. I don't want to set this expectation for myself. So I'm going to tell someone else I'm going to do something so that they have an expectation. Now I feel like I owe them to show up. I'm not showing up for me. I'm showing up for them. And that is not at all sustainable. There are plenty of people that are not ready. And when we talk about behavior change, the ready, willing, and able, the concept of, you know, are you ready to do something? Yes, I'm ready to do something. Are you willing to do something? They're not the same thing. They're two very different things. And then are you able to do it? Is it something that you are physically able to implement in your life? If those things aren't there, then it doesn't matter how much we want it for them. And and I think that's understated in many communications that we have with clients uh, and just in general in the field. I don't think people realize when it comes to good coaches and good trainers, 
how right. much we want them to succeed. Like I, I'm, I'm getting a, I'm getting paid by someone to help them, but my desire for them to succeed, they're not paying me enough. I can tell you that right now for for the amount of the amount of of emotion and and passion that I have for every single person that I work with to want them right. to succeed. Um, it's what drives me far more than the paycheck a hundred and time, a hundred times over. And it's hard because there's times where I want it so bad for people and they're just kind of like, eh, and then I'm like pulling my hair out. That's why I'm bald. Cause you know, I just, <laughs> I'm like, come on, you can do it. No, I started, I was out of shape in my late thirties, started getting mm-hmm. into fitness, got into fitness, got into pretty good shape, didn't have my nutrition locked in, got back out of shape again. Cause I was working my butt off, but I was eating like crap. Right. Realized after like six years, like, wait a second, I'm the same guy I was six years ago, even though I've been working my butt off. I can do all this stuff physically. My physical ability improved dramatically, but I was still a fat ass. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? I still was a schlub when it came to that. And now I'm a coach. I own a gym and I'm trying to tell people how to get in shape. I'm like, this something's not right here. So then I had to get the nutrition in shape. So I I went through a phase of fat to fit to fat. And now I've been fit for five years because I got the fitness and the nutrition locked in. And I'm living my best life at 50. I'll be 51 in a couple of weeks. My journey has not been a steady line in any direction. It's been up, it's been down, it's left and right and whatever. And, and as far as movement goes, like for me, you know, this has been a 12, uh, going on 13 year journey of getting to where I am today. Mm-hmm. I would say that it's been about five years that I finally got to a point where, okay, I'm good. Like I'm not sick. The issues that I had are gone, the injuries and all the different things that I was dealing with to move through all of these different experiments and experiences are gone. I am free. I'm at a point where I am free to experiment, play, find out what I can do, try different things, live my life and not have to worry about any of these other issues. All of that anxiety and all that self-confidence was go- issues were gone because I finally found the right combination of things that worked. Um, it took me eight years to get there, you know, like I, again, I started with fitness and, and when I was 38 years old, fitness for me took four or five years for me to be like, oh, I think I figured this out and I got it. But again, then it was nutrition. Then it was like a couple of years of, of why am I not getting where I want to go? I still have IBS. I still have urgent valves. I still have, have, you know, a ton of excess fat. I still have all these things. I can do a Metcon. I can lift, I can run, I can do all these things no, like I could never do before, but I'm still not where I want to be. And then nutrition in 2018, I went carnivore and that's been it ever since. Which is what I'm trying to say is, you know, helping people understand that it doesn't happen overnight. Like you know, it's been years of you trying to figure out what's going to work best for you and for your clients. And it's the same for me. Hey there, I wanted to let you know about my latest book, Body Confident, that's coming out in September, 2024. Call it a critical thinking guide to your health journey because it is a framework, a guide, a blueprint that's going to help you understand and be able to filter all the information that's out there on the internet that you're getting from social media, YouTube, go to bodyconfidentbook.com. The mentality of no pain, no gain, while it has its merits on some level as a mantra for every workout is probably not the way to go. It's habits, it's sustainability. So Right. The habit is more important than the action. And what I mean by that is you may have a period of your life where, like you said, you got deadlines at work. The next two weeks, I'm working an extra hour and a half, two hours a day at the office. I got to change my schedule. I don't have the time to hit the gym like I normally would. I'm going to have more stress. I got to get up earlier. Like all these things may be going on in your life. If you're focused through all of that on still hitting the gym and maxing out, you are going to come out of those two weeks an absolute zombie. Probably going to have regressed in your progress and you're going to feel like crap. But if you accept where that where you are in that period of time and you say the habit of fitness is more important than the actions I do while I do that habit, Mm -hmm. right? And you take the time, take the same amount of time if you need to, maybe cut it down, but just a habit of I'm set aside time, I'm going to show up, I'm going to do some mobility, I'm going to walk on the treadmill, I'm going to maybe do some lunges and then I'm going to go home, like whatever it may be, but maintain the habit. So as long as you maintain the habit through that period of time, you don't have to restart a habit again, right. but you can just re-engage the intensity as needed. Right. It's a lot easier to carry that through that kind of period than to have to start all over again. And just, and I think a lot of people are so extremist, it's all or nothing. Well, if I'm not going to go to the, if I, if I can't work out the way I want to, I'll just wait for the next two weeks. And then you got two weeks of you built a habit of not working out. So now you got to go and restart that habit of showing up at the gym every day. And it's a lot harder to do that. The differences between men and women is, you know, both men and women work, they have careers, 
But I think mm. from what I've seen, um, when men retire, they end their career, they have a much harder time transitioning. They don't connect to family and things like that the same way as women do. So women can retire, but then they still have their family to fall back on as being important. They have a role there. Men do too, but we often have put so much in our, of our identity into our career. Now we don't have a why. We don't have that motivating thing. We don't have that something that keeps us going that we want to prove ourselves or show that we can do or have a status. And with, it's a lot of status stuff with men too. So I think, yeah, absolutely. If you're a guy listening to this and you're at that point where maybe you're close to retirement or you've already retired or that point where you're, like you said, at the pinnacle and you're looking like what's coming, start thinking about where do I want to be? What do I want to do? What will motivate me when this phase is done? Because you've mm -hmm. got to have something that's, in, you've got to have another thing after this. There's, you're not dead. So what are you going to do? Like, you don't want to just hang around for 20 years until you, until you, until you die. So absolutely. It's super important. Hey there, did you know that I have a free community on Discord? If you go to discord.coachbronson.com, you can join my community, you can meet other people, you can engage in a group of individuals who are all searching for and having success in finding their context and the solutions that will work best for them. Hop yourself in there, discord.coachbronson.com. See you soon.